Hello and welcome to BU30. I'm Mark Pearson. And I'm Millie Sauber. For those of you who may not know who we are, we are BU30, a student-run sports show. Not only will we bring you the most up-to-date sports from Butler, we will also be out in Indianapolis as well covering professional sports. So with Fall in the Air, there's only one sport on everyone's mind, and that's football. Coming off of a hot win against the Jacksonville Jaguars last week, the Colts had no problem topping the Tennessee Titans 41-17 on Sunday. In a game dominated by Titan turnovers, the Colts' offense stole the show. The Colts held possession of the ball for the great majority of the game, with a total of 42 minutes and 21 seconds of ball time, compared to the Titans' mere 17 minutes and 39 seconds. The win was able to even out the Colts' record, bringing them to 2-2. Two and two. We all know we got uh, a bunch of guys that can, that can make plays and getting a, uh, everybody's doing their job and they're playing extreme hard. And again, it's a byproduct of uh, the time they're putting in. You know, you win, you win games, you know, Monday through Saturday. You just don't show up on Sunday and flip a switch. We got the flow, man. We got mojo right now. And, uh, you know, we just got to keep it going. Uh, that's the mojo is, is uh, what, we're, what we're playing on right now. And, uh, you know, it's just you know, motivation, enthusiasm, execution, uh, you know, and all, all that makes us, makes us win games. And uh, that's just where we're at right now. Winning the division is probably the easiest way to get into the playoffs. Uh, and so that, that's our goal. And, uh, you know, today was one step on the way to that. We knew after our first two games that they were very tough opponents, one in a horrible environment in Denver. I mean, that place is tough to play. Uh, and then back here, we let one go against Philadelphia. We knew coming after those two games that we're we had a good team. We said stay confident, keep our momentum going, or build some momentum. Uh, and the confidence was never lost in the locker room. We know we got a good squad. We love our coaches. We love our team. And we're just going to keep it moving. It's great to get to 500, uh, but we got to keep balling out. And that's, that's really our only goal. Kickoff for the Ravens and Colts game is set for 1 p.m. Eastern next Sunday at Lucas Oil Stadium. Along with the Colts and Ravens, let's go to Mark and Marco to take a look at some other key matchups for the weekend. Welcome to Mark and Marco's NFL Report. First game we're going to take a look at, Chicago going to Carolina. Uh, you know what, I, I really think I like Chicago in this one. Um, might be because I'm a little bit of a homer being a big Chicago fan. But I really think they can pull it off here going to Carolina, trying to bounce back from this Green Bay win. Uh, I think that Cam Newton's kind of had a decreasing performance in the past three weeks, and I don't think he'll be able to take uh, the advantage in the secondary. I'm going to have to go with the opposite. I'm going to have to go with Cam Newton and the Panthers. I think he will take advantage of the injuries on defense with Chris Conti, Jeremiah Ratliff, as well as maybe Jared Allen might not play. And that... Passing attack definitely might tear up the Bears' defense this week. Talk about defenses. I mean, Carolina's defenses were ranked, what, 29th for rushing? I think that equals a huge day for Matt Forte, which has been a pretty productive back in the NFL this year. All right, let's go on to Arizona versus Denver. Who you got? Uh, I got Denver in this one. You know, um, Payne Manning has just been such a great, wide, uh, great quarterback this year. He's been killing it. And both teams are both coming off buys. I just think that Denver coming off fresh off a of bye, uh, really can turn this one out against Arizona. They have been playing pretty well, but Denver is going to have the edge in mile high. Yeah, definitely. When Peyton Manning is coming off a of bye week, he is fantastic because he's prepared, he's ready to play the game. Also, Wes Welker came back and is back with Emmanuel Sanders as well as Demarius Thomas. Don't forget about Julius Thomas either. He leads the league with tight touchdowns for tight ends right now. As we go forward, Cincinnati at New England. Uh, I really like Cincinnati in this one, although I do think New England's going to have uh, – Probably a much better performance coming off that just terrible loss uh, this past evening. I think that Tom Brady is just not playing the stereotypical Tom Brady way that we're used to seeing. He's just not paying up the numbers. He does, uh, I believe he's even averaging under 200 yards on the season. That's just not stereotypical Tom Brady, and I think he's looking to uh, get back into it this week. You're right, Tom Brady. The pass offense ranks 30th in the NFL, but their pass defense is ranked first. So expect for the Pats defense to take advantage of Andy Dalton through the air as he may make some mistakes. But I also have the Bengals as well. I just think that the Pats will be unable to bounce back from that terrible, terrible loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. For the last game of the week, we're going to take a look at our hometown Indianapolis Colts who play Baltimore. Uh, Indianapolis Colts, uh, Andrew Luck has just been playing unbelievably recently. Uh, I really think that he's going to be able to take uh, care of this Baltimore defense that do doesn't quite stack up to their previous defenses with their leadership and uh, previous play. But I do look for uh, Steve Smith to take uh, advantage of Laurent Landry being missing from the Colts lineup. Steve Smith had a 
quite the big game against Carolina, and he's just having quite a good year overall. He did. Crafty veteran. He did, and I, I will have to go right with you with Andrew Luck, who leads the league in yards passing and leads the league in touchdowns thrown this year. So Andrew Luck definitely on his A game right now, and he's going against the 24th-ranked pass defense with the Ravens, so I expect Andrew Luck to have a big game and the Colts to win as well. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the Colts should definitely be on their toes. This could be kind of a trap game. The Baltimore Ravens have not been playing too awful, and I, I really think that Indianapolis needs to stay on their toes because a, a quick uh, couple deeps to Steve Smith can put the Colts in a hole, and I don't know if they'll be able to bounce back. Andrew Luck averaging 326 yards passing this year, and maybe he'll extend that to even more. So thank you so much for joining in. Mark and Marco's NFL Report. This coming weekend is huge for college football. The first game to watch out for is number six ranked Texas A&M against 12th ranked Mississippi State. A&M will look to continue their high-flying offense behind the arm of the nation's third leading passer, Kenny Hill. In another SEC matchup, number three Alabama travels to Oxford, Mississippi to take on the 11th ranked Ole Miss Rebels. The Crimson Tide are undefeated and outscoring their opponents by an average of 28 points per game. The Big Ten has a key game that could have huge implications for the conference championship. Number 19, Nebraska, will play against 10th-ranked Michigan State. The Cornhuskers have the nation's leading rusher, Amir Abdullah, in the backfield. However, the Spartans are sporting the fifth-ranked defense against the run this season. Other top matchups this week include number four, Oklahoma, going to play the TCU Horned Frogs. The LSU Tigers, who are ranked 15th, are taking on number five, Auburn. And then the Stanford Cardinals, number 14 ranked, will take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, who are ranked number 9 Ooh, in fun. the polls this week. Back to Butler, but sticking with football, the Butler football team took on Jacksonville this past weekend in Butler's homecoming game. Last weekend, Butler was a buzz as we celebrated homecoming. The Dogs hosted Jacksonville for the big game. The day started out with a huge tailgate in the Hankel parking lot. The tailgate was overflowing with students, parents, alumni, as well as plenty of baby bulldogs. There was also tons of food, games, and fun to go around. At noon, the game kicked off where the Bulldogs came up short to Jacksonville 35-7. The Bulldogs suffered another tough loss on Saturday. The men's soccer team lost to Georgetown after a great win against Evansville just three days prior. In the Evansville game, after giving up an early goal, the Bulldogs responded with an equalizer from freshman Eric Leonard and later a game winner in overtime from Brandon Fricke. Head coach Paul Snape was excited about his team's gutsy comeback win. I thought it was a very good performance tonight. I thought we'd give up the goal, but it was a great response in our movement, our ball circulation, our ability to create chances was probably the best of the season. 22 shots, but it could have easily been seven or eight going in today. I think the keeper made a couple great saves. We had the post as well, but I thought we were very sharp today. So overall, very, very happy with the performance today. I thought everybody stepped up. Uh, guys worked incredibly hard, and they had a lot of passion and a lot of quality out there today. So uh, we'll come away really pleased because Evansville's, uh, I, we, we rate them as well. They're two, five and one now, but they're certainly not that sco uh, that record. They're a lot better than the record. And I'm really happy we beat them tonight because that was a tough game. Eric is, uh, when we recruited him, we knew he had lots of energy as well, but what, what he's doing a great job of, he's box to box, he's, an en he's got an incredible engine. He has anticipation and awareness, and he seems to be able to just get on the ball. He seems to be able to intercept, he's fearless in the tackles, and it inspired our boys tonight. We, we miss Zach, you know, and all our boys know Zach's fantastic, one of the best players in the country. But the boys stepped up today, we've challenged everybody, and Zach's been the first guy in the huddle as well, big cheerleader, great leader, and it really helped us tonight. So Eric's great, great goal, but it was all-round play tonight, it was fantastic, just like Bennett in there. We've got two freshmen starting, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't know it the way they play in the game. Goldsmith today was fantastic. He didn't score, but he did everything else in there, and I thought Joey Bastion's best game of the year. Mm -hmm. Give us another dimension, and our wingers, Jeff and Vinny, they just caused a lot of problems, and then the back line just it keeps getting better and better. Uh, really pleased right now. We'll have to come down off this cl this cloud tomorrow morning because we've got a great opponent, Big East uh, 
Foe. Uh, Georgetown is one of the top ten in the country, so the boys will be up for it, but we're going to uh, enjoy tonight, and uh, tomorrow we'll get focused for the next big game. Three days later, the team hosted Georgetown, the number 11th ranked team in the country, and lost 2-0. Still, the team remains upbeat, and your next chance to see them in action is October 15th, when they host number 13 Marquette at the Butler Bowl. The women's soccer team had the opposite fate in their games this past week. The women's soccer team blasted Seton Hall on Sunday 3-0 with goals from junior Sophie McInone, senior Kelly Mahoney, and sophomore Hannah Farley. The Bulldogs' defense was on fire as Seton Ball only had one shot on goal. This was the team's fourth shutout of the season. Sunday's win was coming off of a tough loss to Villanova on Thursday. It was a very physical game as there were 22 fouls in total throughout the game. This weekend, the Bulldogs are away at Georgetown, St. John's, and Providence. Coming up, we'll show you where Kellen Dunham spent his summer, but first, Let's take a break and look at some fresh faces on the women's basketball team this year. We go to Marco Tomich for the story. As the Butler women's basketball team gets set for the upcoming season, BU30 talked with the team's three incoming freshmen. Sydney Buck, Nicole Orr, and Emmy Shabel talked about their short time here at Butler with the team as they gear up for their first season. I just love the campus, love the coaching staff, love the girls. It just seemed like a really good fit for me. Um, and obviously it's a great academic school, so that was a big part of it too. Just everything about Butler really just felt right. So. What do I like most? I like my teammates the most so far. They say really enjoyable, especially being far away from home. It's kind of like my family away from my family. So. Well, I'm a pretty good shooter, so that's the main thing. Um, and I'll just do whatever I need, like hustling, playing defense, um, anything just to play. Doing my best, working hard in practice, trying to get better, and learning from the older girls and more experience. Uh, well, I was number two in high school. Blair has that number, so but I picked 12 because Steve Alford is one of my favorite players of all time. So and he was number 12, so that was the biggest part. I've grown up like watching the people play in Hinkle and just, I mean, I love Hinkle Fieldhouse and just playing, like just being able to say that I'm playing on Hinkle Fieldhouse and practicing there is just like almost surreal to me. Head coach Kirk Godlewski and the women's basketball team will have their first official practice on October 5th. Yes. The women's sim team is making a splash as they dove into their 2014-15 season this past Sunday. BU 30 reporter Rachel Ganyu has the story. Butler hosted five teams at its first meet at the Fishers Aquatic Center. The Bulldogs came out on top against both Valparaiso and Western Illinois, but fell short against Xavier, St. Louis, and Evansville. Xavier was the only other Big East team at the meet and previewed what some of their conference competition has to offer. Junior Allie Dvorak is proud of her team's performance at the meet and looks forward to the rest of the season. This meet gave us a benchmark on where our team is at so far, and overall, I think everyone was very satisfied with their performances, but it also showed us what we need to work on and what our weaknesses are so that we can continue these next three weeks until our um, second and third meet to um, keep on training and work even harder so that we can do even better and have even more people qualify for conference. Five members of the team also qualified for the conference championships that will take place in February. The Bulldogs' next meet is in three weeks against Eastern Illinois and IUPUI. The women's volleyball team also had a big weekend. The Butler Bulldogs traveled to Creighton on Friday to compete in their first game of Big East Conference play. Despite a strong effort led by the team's seniors, the Bulldogs dropped the match to the Blue Jays in four games. All four games were close, but it was Creighton's defense that made it difficult for Butler to pull ahead. Hitting the road again, the Bulldogs traveled to Washington, D.C. on Sunday to face another Big East competitor, Georgetown University. Butler was able to grab their first conference win, defeating Georgetown in four games. The match was dominated with impressive performances by Butler seniors on both the offensive and defensive spectrums. The Bulldogs will finally end their stretch of away matches by hosting Seton Hall at Short Ridge High School this Friday at 6 p.m. Another Butler volleyball team that met with success this weekend was the Butler men's club volleyball team. They played Rose Holman in their first game and let's take it to the action. 
Last Friday night, the Butler men's club volleyball team was back in action. Their first match was against Rose Holman Engineers. The first set went back and forth between the two squads, but Butler was able to prevail 25-22 after a shaky start. The Bulldogs trailed 22-21 during the first game and showed their resiliency to come back and win. The second set, the Bulldogs wanted to send a message, and they did. They took the second set with a demanding 25-10 win. The third set was also taken by the Bulldogs, 25-17. This was a great start to the year, and now the Bulldogs will look for their next opponent. Kellen Dunham, one of the stars on the Butler men's basketball team, spent a summer mostly off the basketball court and out of the country. Dunham traveled to the Philippines with the program Athletes in Action. AIA has taught Dunham to be closer with God and taught him a thing or two on the court as well. He's looking to take what he learned this summer to help the Bulldogs improve their second year in the Big East. Early on in the season when, when we were going through a hard time, uh, I kind of cried out for God and I, I asked him uh, if he can kind of lead me in the right direction to uh, find him in my life and uh, this opportunity came about through that. Just getting a feel of how, how fortunate we are in the United States to live the way we do compared to the way they live. Um, you know, one of my stories was I was talking to one of my teammates about like, hey man, I can't get any Wi-Fi to talk to my mom, like what's going on? And uh, so we're complaining about that, walking out of the hotel, and then you see little nine-year-old kids laying on the ground on a piece of cardboard. You know, that's their home. So uh, it was really humbling in that aspect, and uh, I was so fortunate and grateful to go. They absolutely love basketball there. So we have people following us around the whole time, 15 people in five seats, just like packed on to watch us play. And so those people will send me uh, Facebook messages almost every day, just seeing how I'm doing. And it was a wonderful experience and great people. Dunham, tough shot, contested, three, Dunham connects! It was dead center, what a shot. I think I have a different approach to leadership this year. I'm going to try to uh, be more of a servant to them and go out of my way for them and show them how much I care about them, um, doing things that I'm comfortable with and being a leader and uh, see where that takes us. Dunham works around from left side, then dribbles back toward the middle. Spin around, elbow, jumper, yes! Nice move. I developed this uh, incredible left hook that I got from my... Uh, my friend Marco here. But uh, besides that, uh, I, I'm just hoping to uh, add a little range to my shot, get some, get some floaters around the basket. Um, I added that to my game and, and everything just slowing down, uh, trying to get the defense to relax a little bit and then exploiting their relaxation. Dunham dribbles into the elbow, now takes it a step further toward the basket, draws the foul and gets the bucket. That, that's the greatest thing about my teammates and my coaching staff is that they trust me they tell me, hey, you came here to shoot the ball, so every time I take a shot, I'm not worried about uh, what my teammates think because they, they trust me in making it. That's it for our show. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at ButlerSports30 and check out our Creative Clip of the Week on our BuzzFeed as well as our YouTube channel. We'll see you next week on BU30.